you know, in robotics, there's an assumption that the number of axes you have to work with are restricted by the number of axes of movement supplied by the automation supplier, the roboticist. I'm with Craig Tomita. He's the area sales manager for the Western U.S. for Universal Robots. And Craig, we're looking at an installation in this case where you actually, you've taken a Universal Robots unit and added another axis. Yes. And this is a direct result of conversations with customers. Uh, normally, a Universal Robot is paired up with a, uh, a single machine, one Universal Robot tending a machine to perform a loading and unloading task. But mounting a, uh, our robot on a linear axis, such as the Festo linear actuator, allows us to, the robot to tend a machine here, traverse over, tend, possibly tend another machine here, turn around, tend another machine. So what used to be a one-on-one, -on -one, one robot to one machine tending operation is now could be a one you uh, are robot on the seventh axis to ten multiple machines. Now, Craig, uh, historically, I know that in many cases, pick and place, machine loading and unloading, uh, the cost function has been restricted sometimes by the cycle time of the machine. If it's a long cycle time machine, you simply can't afford to have a robot sitting idle waiting for it to finish its task. On the other hand, uh, you've been constrained in some cases in creating cells where you have to sort of uh, radially distribute your machines around a central robot because there's no way to translate it then. This sounds like a way to keep a linear configuration of your line and still get uh, your machine done. Right, and uh, uh, we are showing the robot uh, in a right side up configuration, but there's nothing saying that this could be not be an upside down ceiling mounted type of a configuration to further even free up the floor space in a manufacturing facility. That's an interesting application. So with a vertical mount, I can think of several advantages. Uh, clear space underneath for autonomous you got vehicles. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, uh, what industries do you anticipate to, to add this additional axis being uh, most used for? Uh, aerospace, automotive, medical? Well, it's all, all uh, industries across the board. It's, it's less uh, industry specific than it is application specific. Mm -hmm. This tends to be more of a system that's used for uh, machine tool shops, mm -hmm. or it's uh, tending and loading and unloading a machine tool, or it could be an injection molding machine, or a blow molding machine, or a thermoforming machine. But Craig, the additional translational axis in this case, does that in any way constrict the capability of, of, the, ro of the universal robot unit mounted on it now? Does it reduce the payload in any way? Does it change the speed? It does not. The, uh, the beauty of this system is that it is not a separate system. It has been tightly integrated with our controls, so the Festo 7th axis is programmed in using our universal robot teaching pendant. It's not, a, it's not a separate program for that machine programmed through another device. It's all done through our teaching panel. Craig Tomita, Universal Robots, says add an axis, a translational axis, for increased robot versatility.